بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful. All praises and thanks belong to God, creator of the universe. May his blessing and his mercy be upon all of us here gathered to implement one of the God's teachings, justice, mercy, peace amongst his creatures. I am Imam Tahir from Albanian Islamic Cultural Center. I also teach here. We have an Islamic school from pre-K to high school. I teach religion. We are honored to have you here as a Albanians and a Muslims. As I said, we are people of God trying to convey God's message. We believe in the same creator that has created us all. Yet our roads to him are different. But he's our own objective. That's where we aim. God bless your efforts for coming here. And I have honor to introduce to you Mr. Ed Jose, the president of NAACP, Staten Island branch. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ed Jose. I'm the president of Staten Island branch of the NAACP. And uh, we gather here tonight for the sixth annual Staten Island Anti-Bias Solution Making Summit. Before we get started, I would like to introduce a few dignitaries, please. We have first with us Mr. Bill Tate, representing Congressman McMahon. We have Mr. Thomas Aiello, representing Governor David Patterson. We have uh, Mr. Chris Bow, representing Assemblyman Matthew Titone. And uh, we have uh, Angelo Thornton, representing Minority Leader of the Council Member James Otto. And we have Chris Johnson, representing Congress Member Elect Debbie Rose. Thank you. Our theme tonight is to find a way to build inclusive community. We invite you to be a part of this evening's program as an active participant asking questions, offering opinions, engaging in our workshop. We need to create a community that cares pro proactively, not just communities that respond when things go bad. Tonight we will begin to build out such a community. It is my privilege to introduce to you the keynote speaker, Commissioner Galen Curtin of the New York, St New York State Human Rights Commission. Commissioner Curtin has a long history of civil rights activities and goes way back before many of you were born. Tonight, he will address us from his role as state statesman and as a person who sees to it that justice is done when hatred and bigotry enter our communities. We listen with open hearts as we welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Curtin, please. introduction. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I want to thank uh, Project Hospitality and Reverend Kerry Troyer for giving me this opportunity to share some thoughts with you this evening. Uh, with me this evening is First Deputy Commissioner Luis Burgos and Deputy Commissioner, and Deputy Commissioner James Mulvaney. And he's also here taking pictures. Uh, First thing I want to do is suggest that the title for our discussion this evening, which is Beyond Bias to Tolerance and Trust, be changed a little bit to Beyond Bias to Acceptance and Trust. Because tolerance is still a very negative frame of mind. It's a closed heart. And our objective must be to open people's hearts so they can see the humanity of other people and respect other people. Um, I'm actually right now in the most rewarding and thrilling period of my career. 
because of the role that I play at the New York State Division of Human Rights. I have the wonderful opportunity to lead 212 people who work in 12 offices across the state of New York to enforce the human rights law of New York State. A law that was passed, by the way, in 1945, the first civil rights law in the nation, to protect people from discrimination. In the beginning, it focused on employment, and now our jurisdiction extends to employment, housing, public accommodations, non-sectarian education, and credit. What we do is to provide free investigators and prosecutors and administrative law judges who can provide redress, a measure of justice, to people who feel that they've been discriminated against. And that's a very important thing because, as we all know, the types of experiences that people can have as a result of discrimination can be so dehumanizing, so hurtful, so destructive, that if we, as a society, do not have a vehicle, a mechanism, an effective mechanism to address those problems, it would be truly a terrible thing. And so we feel very strongly at the Human Rights Commission, division rather, that we play a vital role in protecting the interests of the people of New York State. Now, in addition to responding to individual complaints, we have the authority under the human rights law to bring our own complaints and investigations if we see discrimination. And we also, because the statute empowers us to promote programs around the state that support human rights, to give everybody an opportunity to fully participate in the economic, cultural, and intellectual life of New York, because of that mandate, we are charged with helping communities to pull together and to make it possible for human rights to be respected. Um, in addition to the work that we do to help communities, we have to respond to hate crimes in various parts of the state. That's one of the most difficult roles that we play. Unfortunately, over the past year, since November 8th, we've spent many days in Patchogue, Long Island. Uh, a place where a man named Marcelo Lucero was murdered on November 8th by a young group of teenagers who had, it turns out, a practice, a habit of hunting Latinos in that area and assaulting them. On that night, he was stabbed to death. And so, in addition to standing up with the good people of that region, to denounce bigotry and hate and violence, we also began to work immediately with a multi-racial group, a multi-ethnic group, a group of people from different religions, to put together strategies to prevent a reoccurrence of that type of tragedy. And we've been to Syracuse too, where Letitia Green was murdered because of the fact that somebody objected to her sexual orientation. And so, that's another thing that we do. But we're not just reactive, we're also very interested and committed to preventive strategies. We've initiated a school-based program to help young people in, learn in high schools and in middle school in New York State to learn about the human rights law and to give them an opportunity to be leaders in their school communities to fight against violence and abuse the violation of human dignity. And so, this evening, I really relish this opportunity to talk the nuts and bolts, to talk about what we can practically do to create a humane society, to make it possible for everyone to be respected.